All right, y'all, if you've been following along, you've seen I've got this small piece of property. Uh, I shot a good Florida buck there last year. Uh, that's the shifty video, go check that out. Uh, I actually uh, got him scored and he is in the Florida buck registry. They have to be over hundred inches, so he just made it, but there are some better deer over there. So I've been in the process of getting some feeders going over there, which I didn't do last year. I've kind of figured out the area a little bit. So I've got some new spots. I got some new stands hung up. It's gonna be a nice little hunting honey hole if you will. Good coyotes over there, which I say good just meaning they're plentiful and gives me plenty of opportunities to do some coyote hunts with you guys. Lots of turkeys, tons of deer. I mean, it's pretty plentiful. So today I've decided I want to start feeding these bucks during the summertime, spring and summer. It's almost June and I want to build some type of protein feeder that I can put pellets, different deer feeds, I guess. I didn't want to spend too much money, so I figured we've got some 55 gallon drums. I can use those. I can make my own feed trough. I can cut those in half and that essentially should give me what I need. So I've got plenty of metal. I got plenty of lumber laying around. I should probably have no money in this. Let's go find some barrels first. All right, I know we got some over here somewhere. There we go. So you can see, we've got plenty of them. So the only problem I've got with these is they didn't have lids. So we actually just cut the whole top out. So when I split it horizontally, it's gonna have an open end. So since I'm gonna split it, I'm gonna have two pieces, right? Instead of making two, I'm just probably gonna take and fuse them together, make them kind of a long, just elongated, I guess, and then that way there's an uh, end on both sides, in theory. Freaking spiders this time of year, guys. Terrible. <clears throat> These things have been sitting in here so long. Look at that dust. Ugh. All right, so you can see no top. So there's a ton of old wood too from the barn. You can see right here, like this is just nothing when we took it apart. We actually have hay stacked in here during the summertime. That's why I've got all this wood stacked right here. So we've got that, got some pallet wood right there. I think I have all the materials to make this thing. Should be pretty simple. All right, so this is a simple process of a sawzall. And I thought I was gonna have to mark it, but the barrel actually has fill values. It looks like it has a seam that runs all the way down and the seam matches on the other side. So I'm just gonna cut that seam on both sides. I'll flip it on its side and then try to just go in a straight line uh, on the bottom. And that will essentially be our ends for the feed trough. <laughs> All right, so it looks like I got a pretty clean cut. You can see two halves. The one side doesn't have an end. Honestly, it's not that big a deal because I'm not gonna put a lot in. If I was gonna fill it all the way up, it would overflow. If I put most of the feed over here, some residual will fall out. I'm already doing it, so I might as well do it right. This end has the lip, so I can lay it in there like that. But because this lip is just kind of an extra little thick area, I could lop the ends off. And then once those are off, I can merge this thing together. Honestly, a couple screws, silicone on the end, maybe, and then I'm done. Then once that's done, I can figure out how I want to build a frame and mount it. I didn't want to build the frame first because I didn't know how big this was going to end up being. I had an idea, but why not just do this first? Have this set, build the frame, and then honestly, I'm just going to make it so this just sets down in it. So I can carry this in separate, carry the frame in, put this in the frame, because it's gonna have the roof and everything on it. So what I'll probably do is finish putting it together out there. That way I can bring the frame, I can bring this, and then I can bring the roof. Let's get to it. This is the one half. This half, I just cut the excess lip, which this one still has right there. You can see the lip. Essentially, since I cut that off, this will be shorter that amount. Plus I don't have that in the way, so this should just fit right in like that, like a glove. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna put a couple screws in here and that's it. I'm not gonna do anything else. So, I think I'm gonna screw them from the inside out. That way they're not poking in. Yeah, so it's gonna be sticking out. So, I figured if I do that, the deer are trying to eat out of it and they poke their face, they're not gonna enjoy that. And they might not want to eat out of it anymore. All right, be good. Well, simple as that. 
The only thing I would worry about, not a big deal, but if moisture gets in there it's going to run under it could actually fill up because there's nowhere for it to run so i may just put some holes in the bottom i don't know yet we'll see preliminary i'm just going to have to build the frame with a cradle almost like this wood that it's sitting on so it would just kind of set like that and then it would hold it up pretty simple let's go figure that out All right, y'all, so you can see I have a side-by-side -side full of random material. I went over there in the barn, and I just wanted to look for everything I had laying over there. <clears throat> it's not doing anything anyway. So the idea is going to be two uprights. We're gonna have the two braces going across. The barrel will lay down inside of that. I'm gonna create two feet per leg, sandwich them together. That'll keep it from tipping over. And then the roof will be just a simple square frame. I'll put it on a little bit of an angle, run two or three purlins. I've got some old metal. Slap it up there. Bigger the better. That way we get all the rain protection. Also need to make that high enough so the deer feel comfortable coming underneath it. So I have to do some measuring. Not going to be an exact thing. Once I get it all kind of tacked together, I'm going to just put like a screw here and there. As long as it works, take it back apart, bring it over there in three sections. And then that way I can just haul it through the woods. Super easy because I can't pull right up to where I want. It's not going to be the prettiest thing, but it's going to be super custom and super free. All right, y'all, so what my plan is here, so these are 42 inches in length. That should give me plenty of stability. That way I can move this around. I've seen some guys where they'll dig a post hole, uh, get a post hole digger, dig a hole in the ground. Then it's permanent and can't move it. I don't want that. I want it to be where I can disassemble it fairly simple. I figured I'm gonna be at that two foot at the top of my barrel so the deer can come in pretty easily, right? Like they just reach down. They're good to go. I want it high enough again to get the antlers. I found a four x four and this was on one of the old barns. Luckily it's already got a bunch of paint on it. So that'll help weatherproof it a little bit. And I'm just gonna measure the center out on this. And then we're gonna go, it's five foot high. That should be perfect. I'm gonna get the centers, screw this in. Once I get both of those, all I'm gonna do is just take and screw a two by four on each side of this four by four across. That'll make a perfect cradle for that thing. Let me get these centers done and then we're gonna go ahead and screw it together. So we'll finally have something that looks like a beater. Kind of. We're gonna center it off the top. So let's just say 27. So that's gonna be 13. Literally make this super simple. We're gonna just, doesn't have to be perfect, right? This is literally just a deer feeder. All right, I'm gonna throw a couple more screws. It's starting to look like we got some. This will go here. Perfect. All right, y'all. So as you can see, this is a general setup. I've got this thing sandwiched in here. When I get out there again, I'm just gonna screw this right here. I got it set just like I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out where essentially my two foot mark will be. And then we're gonna put these two by fours across. I've already got cut. So they're just gonna sit here. Sandwich on top. So I'm gonna mark two foot from the ground. And then that way I can figure out where to put my two bucket. All right, so that's about nine inches from the bottom. So I'm just gonna measure two inches, I'm gonna measure nine inches below. So I'm gonna go to my mark where I want it, go nine inches below, and then that'll tell me right where I need my two by fours. As you can see, it's not that high. Now all I gotta do is match the other side. It's perfect. All right. Now I'll slide this in here. Super snug, awesome fit. And like I said, what we're gonna do, once I get it out there, you can see it fall right off. But if I just screw it on both ends into that, not gonna go anywhere. I feel like that's perfect height for a deer to walk up and stick their head in if the roof's this high. So we're gonna be at five foot. Deer comes in, antlers. Still got plenty of room, right? This will be separate. This will go on, 
I'll screw it on here. The roof will be a separate piece that just pops on. Same thing, that might be a two-person carry. Um, the metal's not that heavy. I'm using these lighter two by fours that are real dried out, so should be good. Let's throw the roof together, and then we'll be done. We'll get it out in the woods and uh, see if we can get these bucks start eating out of this thing. Look at that, beautiful fit. This thing is definitely all crooked, but it's just twisted wood, which again, it was free and laying around. It's bad boy. All right, y'all, we just got one more set. My idea is that the deer are gonna probably come up from this front side here, uh, and that way it'll be easier for them to get the antlers under and not feel as impeded, because I don't want it to feel kind of tight or, you know, claustrophobic for them. It's obviously gonna take time for these deer to get used to this thing anyway. Beautiful. All right, guys, this is going way easier than I thought it would. Um, just because I was using, you know, crap laying around. I thought it'd be a little harder, like pull the nails out and this wood's a little twisted, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with a little bit of warp. It's not that big deal. Let me show you what we got. So it's looking pretty good. This uh, will be straighter. There you go. So you see what I did was, so I'm gonna put a roof on it and I wanted it sloped a little anyway. Since I got it sloped a little bit, I figured this side here, I'm gonna have where I assume the deer are gonna be mainly coming from. So this will be the higher side. So you see it's very open. It's not confining. I don't think it'll be too much for the deer to be stressed out about. Cause I know it's gonna take the deer a little while to get used to this thing. Whenever you're gonna have one of these, that's gonna be the case. But since this side is higher, they can walk right into there, no problem. Any deer that ever is gonna to come to this feeder will fit in here just fine. This will help shed some of that water. Um, I am gonna be using a corn soybean blend, bag of 4S, they're out of Georgia and this stuff looks awesome. We're gonna put it in here. We're gonna see how the deer like it. Uh, it's got a lot of protein in it, which is what we're wanting. And then we're gonna switch to a protein pellet feed probably. Maybe some of the cow feed we're feeding because we're at like 17 to 20% right now on it anyway. I have tested it, the deer do eat it. It's just, it gets wet, it gets clumpy and gross. Uh, our cows eat it right away, not a big deal. I may not be able to go with that. The pellets may be, but the pellets also can do the same thing if they get wet, so. Let's throw this metal on here and see what it looks like. I'm gonna take it apart, we're gonna go put it out. Got the purlin set. I'm getting this last one so you can see. It's actually kind of hard to see, I'll show you, but. So that's one right here. And then I'm gonna put one here. So that way it'll give me the stability and strength in the middle, but also it's overhanging on the side so I can space that metal out as wide as it'll go. It'll still have support. So these may be sticking out a little bit. Um, get it close, we'll see. If there is a little, if there's only like an inch or two, I'm gonna nip it off. So we'll throw this last purlin on and we'll be good to go. As you can see, this is overkill as far as the size of the roof, but it's the size metal that I have, so I'm not gonna go cut other pieces. It's here, it's not too big, it's functional. Actually, it might be better, because it's a little more protection on the size and over the top, uh, we should be good. So, let me go grab the other piece and make sure it's gonna fit. There we go. So I've got it centered as best I can. Uh, it's just got to be where it's gonna live. So we're gonna have to cut about two inches off of each side. Cut it now. Don't have to worry about it. Take five seconds. Why not? Problem solved. We are going to go ahead, put some of these in. As you can see, they're self-tapping. 
There's definitely some areas I'm going to have to silicone because this is an old roof, so there's holes where the old screws were. Which, of course, is what you get when you're using older used stuff. I'm fine with that. And I don't have the ladder. Sucker's not gonna be going anywhere. All right, y'all, so the spray insulation guys showed up and cut the end of this video short, but it came out great. As you can see, I was just throwing the roof on. It was pretty much done anyway. If you wanna see the final version, we're taking it apart, we're putting it in the back of the truck, and we're gonna go actually put this thing out in the woods. We're gonna put it to the test. We're gonna put some protein feed in it and see how long it takes a deer. You wanna see that, check this video right up here. I'll put a link to it. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe.